Hello people, once again, this is your boy, your man, your YouTuber, your New Jersey Devils fan, Jack McCarthy! And I'm doing another reaction video tonight, just one more, and then I'm going to do one Lundley, later, me, later, you know, since it's us, since it's already midnight, but later down the road, but this one is a Mr. Nightmare one, and there's three more true scary Instagram stories, and you always got to be careful when you're on apps like these and you talk to people. Sometimes they're real, sometimes they're not, sometimes they're ads, sometimes they're not. But just, you know, always stay, always have caution when you're on these apps and don't try to over-exaggerate some things. All right. So anyway, wait, this is a reaction to the Mr. Nightmare thing. Before I begin, make sure you click that subscribe button down there, the little bell, thing. And make sure you never, ever, 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 ever miss out any updates or other videos such as this. And check out my last reaction, the Jason Mother Mother parody song by the Merkins. Check that out as well. In the meantime, without further ado, let the reaction to the three more true scary Instagram stories by Mr. Nightmare begin. Hang on, people. Michaela, Destiny, oh, just gonna go back. Michaela, Destiny, and Ethan Miller. Nope, names don't sound familiar to me. Instagram is my favorite time waster app. I spend a good chunk of my free time browsing it. I've gotten my fair share of creepy DMs. I've learned to ignore them. So when I got a notification from Instagram that some random account requested to DM me, I didn't sweat it. I did, however, just open the DM because I always do out of curiosity. The DM was a link to another Instagram profile named Perfect Always with a Z. Hmm. I pressed the link and it opened this page with a bunch of pictures of girls. Like young girls. Seemingly varying in ages from 13 to 20. Hmm. As I continued to scroll through the account, I picked up on an unsettling fact. What? That all the pictures seemed to have been taken in secret. Like one girl was on a school bus, one was sitting on a park bench. Okay. One was taken from behind a bush of a girl walking on the sidewalk. Okay, red one flags. Was taken of a group of girls at a college campus. Red flags. Expecting to find perverted comments on the posts. All I found were positive comments like keep up the good work and nice. There were also some comments with random numbers like 500 and that's it. And every single account that commented appeared to be spam accounts. Like no profile pictures and no followers. Hmm. It was a weird and creepy account, so I reported it and sent a link of it to my friend Ali. Good. Then I went about my business. I was at school when all this happened, so I couldn't give it too much attention to begin with. All right. It wasn't until after school when I got home that Ali finally texted back saying, OMFG, who did that? That's crazy. I replied, I know, it's so creepy. She seemed more concerned and shocked than I was expecting her to be. Huh. She replied saying, you need to report that to the police right away. I replied back, why me? Yeah. It's not exactly my problem. She replied back with nothing but question marks mixed with exclamation points. So I said, why are you freaking out? Yeah. She said, why don't you care about someone posting pictures of you on their Instagram? My heart sank. I immediately rushed to click the link again and view the profile. This time there were two new photos uploaded to the page. What? One of a girl in the passenger seat of an SUV and one a picture of me walking home. <gasps> It was taken from inside a car parked on the side of the road. Oh, shit. I remembered seeing that car, and I remembered noticing someone sitting in it. This just seemed unreal. I called Allie at once, freaking oh, out. Oh, boy. I told her why I didn't understand at first, and explained how some random account DM'd me the link. Allie told me to report it to Instagram and the police. I told her I reported it to Instagram already, and told her to do the same. I stayed locked in my room, talking to Allie for at least an hour, as I was home alone. Mm-hmm. The next time I refreshed that Instagram page, it said, this page does not exist. First thought, okay, it blocked me. So I asked Allie to refresh it as well. And it said the same thing for her. Oh, no. We both used our Finsta accounts to confirm that it was removed. And it was. The account no longer appeared. I still don't know if it was taken down by Instagram or if the creator of the account deactivated it. Well, I also have no yeah. idea what those numbers in the comments meant. Either way, it seemed like one big setup thing. I'm scared to know yeah. any other details about what was going on with that Instagram page. Or who that person in the car was that was stalking her. It was probably a girl, I could sense it. The situation happened in my first year of high school. I was 15 years old and lived pretty far from school. 
which resulted in me taking public transportation to and from there. Yeah. My Instagram was set to public back then, and I never really cared much about who followed me, which, in retrospect, being a young teen, I should have. Yeah. My page was pretty standard. I was visible in most of my posts, posing by myself or with a couple of my friends for the most part. I also post a lot of my story, which, for those of you who don't know, allows users to share photos and videos to their story for 24 hours. All right. In those stories, I would sometimes include a shot of me waiting for the bus or at the subway with music playing in the background. I remember posting such one day and randomly looking at my stories and seeing who viewed them. I had around Your 120 rat queen. views, most of them from people I knew. If Taylor. One account in particular stuck out. What? The profile pic showed an unfamiliar middle-aged man. The Ooh. selfie was taken at a weird close-up angle, like those cliche parent selfies. Ah. He had seen every one of my stories posted. I didn't really think that much of it and continued about my day. Okay. Hours later, when I was nearing sleep at around 2 a.m., I got notifications that that same man had requested to DM me, followed me, and liked all my posts. Okay. I had about 12 posts, so it wasn't a crazy amount of notifications. Mm. I opened his DM and it just said, hey, with a smiley face. I definitely found this crazy weird, so I didn't respond and checked his profile. His username was odd. Sam with a bunch of numbers. He only had one post. The weird angled selfie with two likes. Ugh. I finally got a decent look at his face. He was pale and bald with dark tinted sports glasses. Ugh. He seemed to be wearing a ripped white t-shirt. He had five followers and was following around 400 people, which mostly consisted of teenage girls, young women, and a few celebrities. Oh, red flags. Realizing what an actual creeper this guy was, I blocked him, plain and simple. Good call. In the morning, I got off the subway stop that's next to my school and took a seat on the bench in the middle of the platform to adjust my backpack. Doing this, I felt someone watching me. The platform was packed with people, so I thought maybe it was just my anxiety. Maybe. I rose up and turned to find the now familiar middle aged creep staring at me. <gasps> His eyes were a glossy blue color, sunken and droopy. He stood a good 20 feet from me, just gawking with an angered frown. Oh, he's so a strong urge to throw up and cry at the same time. My skin prickled and my whole body filled with fear. Everything I was feeling was multiplied by a thousand as I realized he was slowly walking towards me. Shit. No one paid him any attention. No one batted an eye. And I remember breathing hard and heavily, wishing someone would pick up on what was happening. I turned and speed walked around and passed people trying to lose him. Though with each step I took back, he took two steps forward. Oh no. He was getting a lot closer to me by the second. It was all happening so fast, and I honest to God didn't know whether to continue to run or attempt to draw attention to him ran into a woman with a seemingly friendly face on the stairs. Oh. And that's when I decided on the ladder. I told her that guy in white is following me. As I spoke, I heard my own voice quiver. And that's when I realized how afraid and panicked I actually was. She noticed the man I was referring to at the bottom of the steps. And that's right away good. she called him out. She told him to stop following me or she'd call the police. Her shouts made him freeze as others began to stop and take note of the situation. Mm -hmm. She stood protectively in front of me, waiting for his next move. I took the opportunity to snap a quick pic of his face, that I would later use to report him. In my head, all I thought was, he's not going to do anything with people watching me. He can't be that stupid. And I was right. He turned around and got on the next subway train. Good call. The woman walked me to my school. And on the way, I couldn't help but wonder how that man could have possibly found me. Yeah. And then I remembered. I posted the story of the subway stop I got off. Oh. That realization alone made my skin crawl yeah. and taught me a very important lesson to never reveal your specific location to your public social media. Mm -hmm. After the woman walked me to my school, I thanked her and actually gave her a hug. I don't know what I would have done if she hadn't stepped in. I wasn't brave enough to say anything to the man, so frozen in fear. But that woman was, and I'm forever grateful for her. And I hope that if anyone is ever in her position, that they will step in and use their voice to help. It never hurts to help. And everyone needs a little help. Alright, story number three. Uh, so far, the first story was kind of scary. The internet and social media can be a very dangerous thing. This personal experience of mine is a prime example of what I mean. I've had an Instagram account for like seven years now. I used to post on it a lot more when I was younger. These days, I really don't post at all. Eh, I only open the app from like time to time, yeah. to browse my friends' posts or whatever. Recently, I lost my phone. I figured it was time for a new one anyway, though. I 
did try the whole find my iPhone thing, but it said my phone was like 30 miles away. It just wasn't worth it for that old phone. Yeah. Moving on, maybe you're right. Not too long ago, I got a DM from a kid from high school that I hadn't spoken to in years. Huh. In fact, I didn't even follow him. I peeped when he DM'd me, and it was a heads up message. He was bringing it to my attention that someone was using my pictures on a fake Instagram account. What? He shared the profile in question with me, so I had a look and realized he was right. There was this entire account pretending to be me, just using a different name. There were pictures Someone's I've never using his old phone. On Instagram before on there. Pictures exclusive to my old phone. Mm -hmm. My head was spinning. I actually felt sick over this. I immediately assumed whoever found my old phone somehow bypassed the password. The account mm -hmm. had 50 followers and it was following around 150 people. Oh, geez. The posts all got like 5 to 10 likes. Most had no comments, but some had basic comments like a flame emoji or whatever. Oh boy. This account was literally pretending to be me. It had a yep. story posted, so I went to check that. Oh and no. I felt even more sick to my stomach. What? There was a boomerang panning from my house to my car over and over. As oh, if they were shit. showing off both. Oh, the boomerang no. is basically just a looping two second video that goes back and forth from one point to another. This meant whoever was doing this knew where I lived and had any other information I may have still had on that phone. Crap. The story was posted only a few hours ago. I immediately thought to go to find my iPhone settings and turn on lost mode. I regretted not doing that the second I lost that phone, though. Yep. When I tracked my old phone one last time, I was in for another horrible surprise. What? It said the location of my old phone was right outside our house somewhere. I had a lot of space between houses in our gated community. So there was no mistaking that person was still out there on the property somewhere. Mm -hmm. I turned on lost mode on the old phone and ran downstairs to get my roommate Corey's attention. It seemed he was already occupied, though, by his husky barking at something in the backyard. <laughs> Corey was standing He's by the door watching his dog. I explained in as few words as possible because I felt the situation was dire. We stepped out into the yard together to call his dog in. Was out in the grass barking rather viciously at someone or something out of sight. Someone. The dog was barely visible because it was so dark out. We went together to grab the dog by the collar, and as we got hold of him, we saw someone in the bushes run away into the patch of trees that separated our house from the next house. It was like a jump scare moment mm -hmm. in a horror movie. That dark figure I saw run into the trees had to be the stalker pretending to be me on Instagram. Yep. I just knew it. We brought the dog inside and locked the door. You may ask, why didn't we let the dog chase down whoever it was? Yeah. That's because Corey's dog is all bark, no bite. Ah. He would never harm a fly. Makes sense. At some point in the middle of the night, the dog started barking again downstairs by the front door. <gasps> this was very unusual behavior. So Corey and I both checked out the windows and then stepped outside. It was the most scared I had ever felt in my life. Standing on the front porch, looking out into the dark night, knowing someone was out there probably watching us. Mm -hmm went back inside and for the rest of the night silence i think whoever had my phone turned it off or smashed it after i put it in lost mode to avoid it being tracked any further mm, I say possibly this because it would no longer update the location i checked everywhere by the last known location but it didn't turn up after dming that account that i knew who they were and was filing a report to the police the account disappeared only a few minutes later okay i don't think it was deactivated i think it was completely deleted my threads seem to work. Like I said, this was recently though, and I'm still staying very aware of my surroundings. Good call. He does make a good point. I meant when you're when you're on apps like Instagram, Snapchat, and any other stuff, you always gotta be cautious with who you talk to. You never know. You just never know. And don't lose your stuff anyway. If you do, then you must track it. It's very important to track it before someone else finds it. And you don't know what they use it for. That's all I can say right now. I hope you guys like this reaction video. So far, number three was by far the scariest, I would say. Say, uh, my, my rank is the third story, the first. The, the first story, the second. And the second story, the third. All right. I hope you guys like this video. Like, subscribe, check out Mr. Nightmare, click the subscribe button, hit the little bell so you never, ever, 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 ever miss out any other uh, updates or videos such as this. And always stay tuned for more videos in the future.
This is John McCarthy here, and I'm signing off. El Bioe.